Sometimes as a man, it's it's hard to just agree that you were wrong. Sometimes it's hard to just say, yo, you know what? I really got this one wrong. And today I get to look y'all in the face and say, hey, I really got something wrong. I made a video making fun of them. I made a video saying all kinds of bad things. And I got to come back right in front of all these people and say, your boy was wrong. And they might have just won the transfer window. We're going to talk about the winners, the losers, and who got the transfer window right. That's in my opinion, baby. It's football talk with your boy, AA9Skills. Let's get it. Look, we're going to talk a lot about the EPL, and there's a team who got it extremely wrong, and there's a team that's going to win this that we would never even think could win this based off of what I said in my last video, or my last three videos. We're going to start off outside of Europe, I mean outside of England, because the biggest winner, winner of this winter transfer, for me, is Barcelona. You signed Felipe Coutinho midwinter, and the reason why this deal is so big is because you usually don't see deals like this happen in the winter time, at least not players like this. When, and I know a lot of people will say, well, we saw Sanchez that's a big deal Sanchez was much different Felipe Coutinho was in a contract Felipe Coutinho this deal happened strictly because they both wanted it to happen the Sanchez deal was kind of like yo we have to make it happen so in my opinion out of everybody in the world Barcelona made some big moves and the biggest losers in the entire world Real Madrid. I mean, Madrid made no moves. You watch your biggest rival not only go a lot of points clear of you on the table, but they also sign a star by Felipe Coutinho and you will make no moves. You don't beef up your defense. You don't check out your midfield. You don't help. No, no giving Ronaldo no help. If anything, y'all go backwards. So in my opinion, the biggest losers, Real Madrid, the biggest winners, Barca. But now let's talk about England. Now in England, I want to start off with the biggest losers because this story is actually a pretty big story. This story has been hitting all kinds of like loads of different websites. Sky Sports talked about it. Pretty much what's going down is from what I'm seeing, Marez is actually boycotting training. Marez is actually boycotting Leicester City. And I say Leicester City are the biggest losers in this window because Marez really wanted to go to City. It looked like something massive. He wanted that move big time. It looked like something that it just seemed like it was destined to happen. And all of all of a sudden on transfer window deadline day the deal falls apart for whatever reasons Mares now looking like he's boycotting Leicester City it looks like things are getting out of control this is not good for the locker room not only are you the biggest losers because you couldn't make the Mares deal happen but you signed a, a striker about a year ago that goes for uh, by the name of Selamani you have big hopes for this guy you bring him in you sign him you also signed a guy named uh, Andre Silva from Sporting that's finally getting playing time for you guys but Selamani signs for you guys you sign uh you sign Silva, you sign Selamani, you're ready to see if these guys can make things happen. By the time Silva gets on the field, Selamani's on his way out. I believe he moved over to Newcastle now, and that's a pretty crazy one because you bring in Selamani, then you got to get rid of Selamani because he's no good for you. And now all of a sudden, the Mares deal is a, a disaster because now he's boycotting. Leicester City got this, in trans this entire transfer window wrong. A lot of people saying Selamani leaving is a good thing, though, as he wasn't really performing at the club or even playing. But at the same time, you finally get Silva in there too guys that played together at Sporting, maybe you can get something going with them, you finally get him on the field, and all of a sudden, Selamani's on his way out, so, with all that being said, I really feel like Leicester City, they absolutely messed up completely with the Mares deal, and now you got a player that's extremely mad at the club, and it doesn't look like he's gonna get a lot of playing time, or it doesn't look like he wants to play, so that's a pretty big story, man, I definitely think, you know, out of all the teams that could get this window wrong, I thought it was gonna be the one, the only... Arsenal. I thought Arsenal would have had the biggest flop, man, after the Sanchez craziness, after everything went down. But no, they're not going to get the biggest flop. That's going to Leicester City, of course, in my opinion. And with that being said, you know, one team that looked like they could possibly win it is going to have to be, you're going to say United, but no, not United. United made a big move with Sanchez. And I would say that United made a massive move for the future. I don't think that Sanchez is going to come into United and make them a better team right now. United actually needed a defense, in my opinion. I got a friend that I don't want to say his name in here, uh, but because if I say his name next time I log on Discord. I'm gonna have to hear it for the rest of my life about how I bullied him in my video. So I'm not bullying him, I'm just saying. I have a friend that uh every all of us have one of these friends. You know, a friend that you sit down on the couch with to talk about football, and everything you say doesn't really matter unless it's his club. You know, everything that his club does is almighty, and everything his club doesn't do is the right thing. And every time his club doesn't do something, it's the wrong thing. It's everything his club. He only bleeds that club. That's all he sees. He only sees that club. Well, 
I had a conversation with him when, when they bought Lendeloff. And I told him, listen, man, Lendeloff is a great player, but he's not ready for United yet. And I truly felt that way as a Benfica fan. I thought he was a great player, but just not ready for United yet. The same thing I said for David Luiz when he went to Chelsea. Now, I said that because the Portuguese league is very, very slow paced. A lot like uh, the Italian league or even Spain win certain games. And the EPL is very fast. And I felt that United needed a better center back. I feel like United has a great center back in Eric Bailly, but he's always injured. And and their left back and right back situation with Valencia Young, it's cool, but is it great? I would say no. Um, so I felt like they needed a defense. And instead, they get Sanchez and they only traded McTarian for him, which is great. And you would say they won the league, uh, won the, the window with that. But I say no, because you didn't touch what you really needed. I felt you needed a defense. You know, I really felt that your defense is lacking. Mourinho likes to play defensive, but it's hard to play defensive when you got Jones back there and you got Smalling for a game, then you got Eric Bayer the next. I mean, your defense is all over the place. You, you needed a center back and you didn't sign one so in my opinion Manchester United kind of got this window wrong not the worst as they made a great move for Sanchez but is Sanchez going to help them spring them to the next level I think he's going to be great for them going forward but I definitely think they need a defense we talk about City and this team got it right big time man the move for Laporte which that deal went through right you fix your defense your offense is already ticking on all cylinders I mean you got the oil going through that machine like it's nobody's business Guardiola looking like the old Barcelona out this piece man playing great football contenders for the Champions League but now you help your defense out you bringing a great young Laporte, man. And I told you, this team is building for the future. Obviously, they didn't get Mares, which is a mess up because obviously, I believe they lost Le Leroy Sani on injury. You really wanted Mares because really all you got now is Bernardo Silva. So you don't really got much happening on the wings, you know what I mean? You got injuries all over the place. I, I'm, do they get Gabriel Jesus back soon or is he back? I'm not even sure. But your wing situation is a disaster as you couldn't fix that. But your, your offense is an oil machine, man. It's going great. Defensively, they knew they needed some help, so they picked up Laporte. And I think everything about City was fantastic. If they could have just got a winger, I think they could have won the window, man. Again, a young, good center back coming into a team that's already great in so many ways. And a lot of people are like, well, didn't it fail because they didn't get Sanchez? I don't really think they needed Sanchez. I think Sanchez was a good option for them. Obviously, they needed a winger as well with the Sani going down now. But I don't know if they needed a Sanchez, a big name like that. I feel like the team's ticking great. They got a great center back in. I think they did what United and them, they, they needed the same, in my opinion, right? But... More importantly, United needed a defender more than City needed, in my opinion, because City, in my opinion, opinion, their attacks doing such great things that the defense, it kind of is what it is. But now with Laporte coming in, they beefed up. So I definitely think United and City needed the same thing, um, and they both got... I think City needed a winger more than a defender, and I think that United needed a defender more than a winger, in my opinion, of course. But the winners, the winners of the market, man, I gotta say... For me, in my opinion, bros, you know, I still say Vanger out. I'm sorry, but they won the market, man. And they won the market in a wonderful way. And I, I'm happy for Arsenal fans because... You know what I'm saying? Like, you lose a guy that just didn't want to be there. You lose a guy that you were going to lose no matter what. And you trade him for McTarry, and everybody goes, that's not a good deal. And I didn't think it was a great deal neither because I wanted him to see them move this guy out of Europe, whether, it, I mean, out of England, whether it was to buy or into Juventus. You know, I wanted him to them to move him away from a contender like United, and they didn't do that, and I thought that was a massive L. But to turn around and snatch up an Aubameyang with Lacassetti there already, with the great things this team can now become moving forward off of Sanchez it's very nice it's very good because they are the winners in my opinion because they gave the fans what they deserve the fans were heartbroken and hurt about the Sanchez situation but they brought in somebody to ease the pain they brought in Aubameyang somebody you can be happy to buy a shirt somebody you can see is proud to be part of Arsenal a guy that you know you can get behind now and a guy that actually can give them what they actually need, which is goals. They play a lot of the tiki-taka stuff, though, you know, that type of football. But, you know, with Giroud being gone now, now they have a fast guy that can get on the end of these things and get them goals. So, in my opinion, Aubameyang was an outstanding move for Arsenal. I think it was a great move. Do I think he's going to be an outstanding goal scorer in the EPL? Hard to say. Very hard to say because, you know, the EPL is such a hard place to get goals and find goals. But, in my opinion, the move is a good one because you made the fans happy. And at the end of the day... Football is about the fans. Football is about fans, fans being happy. And your club has been so unhappy with Arsene Wenger in the up past few years. You finally gave the fans something to smile about. And that's why, in my opinion, you win the league. Does this spring you to the top three, top two? 
Probably not. It probably doesn't all of a sudden make you better. It doesn't, I don't know. You lose Sanchez, you bring Aubameyang, you get, uh, who's better, blah, 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 whatever. At the end of the day, you made fans happy. In my opinion, you finally gave Arsenal fans something to smile about. And in that opinion, that reason, I say you guys are the winner of the transfer window. And you also got yourself a star player. You moved away Sanchez, who just didn't want to be there. At least you got somebody in return. Obviously, in my opinion, you should have moved him out of Europe. But getting Mkhitaryan, getting Aubameyang together now, you got something special there. You know, if you could build off this in the summertime, if that's who you're staying with is Wenger, hopefully he could build off of this. Hopefully he can get Aubameyang and Lacazette to play well together. And all of a sudden, man, Lacazette and Aubameyang together with Mkhitaryan, maybe on a wing, Uzo behind them. You know, you start to you start to see something special in that front attack for them. So I definitely think they could win it as long as they can find a way for Aubameyang and Lacazette to play together. You found a way to win it. You found a way. If you could find a way to win with them, you won the, win the window, in my opinion. Congratulations to you guys. The losers for me, Leicester City, as they just messed up with Mares. Selamani was a bad buy. You had to get rid of him now. But I think you should have kept him to at least see if him and Andre Silva could link up together. Because you guys have Andre Silva now. I think he can play. I think he was, yeah, he's put in. So, in my opinion, maybe let him just give him like a, until the summertime. Then let him walk if, they, if things aren't working out, in my opinion. But... Leicester City loses out as they have a freaking boycott situation with Mares. Arsenal wins because they turned a horrific situation into a great situation for the fans. And City did great business with Laporte. If they would have got a winger, I would have given it to them. And United, uh, close to being one of the worst windows. I know you absolutely got an absolute superstar. But guys, as a United fan out there, if you're out there watching this video right now, could you not say that that defense is in shambles, that that defense needs help? If Eric Bailly could stay healthy, we wouldn't be having this conversation. But with Eric Bailly not healthy, should you be looking for a center back? Lendeloff obviously not working out the way you thought he was. Should you be looking for a center back? De Gea needs some help back there, in my opinion. Hey, man, this has been your boy, AA9Skills. That is football talk, in my opinion. Remember, man, I'm just a dude that watches football, plays FIFA. I know nothing about football. I just like to give my opinion on things that are going on around the world. That's some news going on with Leicester City as well, if you guys didn't know. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please smash that thumbs up. Could this get 5,000 likes? Who won the market? You know who lost the market. You know, and that's all I got, in my opinion. And thank you guys so much for watching. And I'm going to see you guys tomorrow for a career mode episode. And then a vlog after that. Thank you so much, man. Good night. Good morning. And peace. Yeah.